What's up beautiful people? Welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about Lightroom. Lightroom seems like a very difficult program to start using. Now it's I, it's very intimidating when you first start, I will admit, but the latest version is a little bit more user friendly for people just starting out. I know the people that have been using it for a while, they don't like it, I get it, but we're going to start talking about why it's a very simple program really and how you can use it if you know instagram or visco vsco it's the same thing it's very similar you just have to understand what you're doing to the image now should we get started i think so we're just going to start at the top and work our way down first exposure what do you need about it need to know about exposure nothing i'm just kidding exposure is that it controls the exposure of the image that you've put into Lightroom. Now, if you've already exposed the shot how you want to, then I wouldn't play with this. Uh, what I like to do is make all the corrections below it and then go in and maybe raise the exposure a little bit. Um, later on, you can brush the image how you want and expose certain parts of the image, but for now, we're just gonna leave this alone. Contrast, so what contrast does is it, when you increase the slider, it increases the contrast between the darker and the lighter midtones. So it's just bringing the image out. It's it's making it pop. And it what was once a flat image now looks crisp and alive. Now we're moving into the highlights and the whites and the shadows and the blacks. And this is still a little confusing sometimes, but here's the way I understand it. The highlight slider can help you with areas that aren't bright enough or that are too bright. So it kind of helps you control uh, the exposure a little bit. And the whites are going to help you bring out the most in those spots. So the highlight can only go as far as the white is set. You can use the white slider to set the brightest point in your image. Um, once you've done that, you can use the highlight slider to control the detail in that bright spot and then vice versa for the black slider and the shadow slider. Um, the black slider will control the darkest point and then the shadows will bring out the detail in that spot. So taking that and applying it to this image, I'm gonna use the white slider and bring out the brightest point being around his face because there's also white in the wall that's gonna be the brightest spot. Um, I'm gonna leave it at 47. Uh, no, 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 let's take it down to 40, actually. So then I'm gonna go over to the highlights and then I'm gonna bring out some of the details. See, as you can see, the background changing and the top half of the image, that's because that's the brightest section. So I'm going to raise the detail just a little bit. I'm gonna go 13 right there. So the darkest point of the image is his hair because it's so dark. So that's what we're going to use to look at when we control this. So as you can see, if I go down, everything gets dark, but his hair is, there's no detail in it and it almost looks like a toupee or something. So I'm going to raise it a little bit because I want to get the detail and I want to see the locks there. So I'm going to raise it just a little bit. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, I like that. Then we're going to control the shadow. So we want to control the detail within that space. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm actually gonna lower the black slider just a little bit because once I brought out the detail, I realized I kind of wanted it a bit darker. So I'm just gonna lower it just a little bit. Now it's time to play with colors and colors are a lot of fun because this is where you can really tweak the image. Um, the first thing you can do is play with the temperature. So this is just gonna be the actual color temperature of the picture. Um, I usually tend to favor warmer colors. So I'm gonna move the slider just to the right a little bit. Now, as you can see, you move to the right all the way left. This is what it allows you to do. But, um, and you can see that's a really cool image, um, but I wanna, I wanna set it a little warm. It was a really hot day. It kind of calls for the mood that we were in. We were sweating, we were hot. It was very uncomfortable. It's just about the story that you wanna tell with the picture. And, now you can play with the tint. So the tint, just like the color, or just like the temperature, is gonna be, it's gonna have some drastic results, but it's also gonna play off of what you set the temperature to. So let's, I wanna set it, you can, you can tell that it's kind of going for the reddish to greenish look. So 
we're going to set it right there. I like that. And that's going to be plus 23. I don't usually look at the numbers. I just kind of look at the image and then play with the sliders. I don't think many people do look for the numbers, except if they're flying through and they have their normal settings that they like to go to. Now we're approaching vibrance and saturation. Vibrance brings out all of the dull colors in the image. Um, whereas saturation brings out all of the colors. So it's very easy to overdo it with the saturation, which is why I generally don't touch the saturation much. Um, but vibrance, let's play around with vibrance here. So let's see, we're going to bring it out just a little bit. I think that looks pretty good like that. See if you go all the way down here, it gets black and white. Um, it's not even fully black and white, but as you can see, let's do... There we go. So saturation can be a little too much. So we'll bring it up. So your best friend in Lightroom is gonna be the HSL tool. This is gonna help you control the colors and make things pop in the image. So for this particular picture, there's so many colors in the background that I wanna bring out that make it you know, alive. You can pick a few colors that you want to pop. So for this, I want the yellow. Um, so I'm gonna hit yellow. And as you can see, you can change the color a little bit, uh, but I don't really wanna change the color too much because I like it. So we're gonna go down here and maybe change the intensity or the saturation like we talked about before and that specific color. So we're gonna move it up just a little bit. And then for the luminance, you can make it uh, brighter or darker as you wish. Side note, one of the things you should be looking at when you play with the HSL part is that it will affect all image or all colors that you want. So if there's any color in your subject's face or whatever you want to not be altered, you have to be looking at that too because what I've done before is I play like, okay, let's do this one for example. So the red, um, let's change the color. But as you can see, look at his face. You see how his face is turning and making him look a little pale, or sick even. So you have to be looking out for all the colors in the shot and uh, make sure you're looking in detail at what you want to be the focus because I've even gone as far as posting an image before and not really paid attention and some of the colors in the person's face were like reddish greenish and I posted it and I looked like an idiot. So be looking out for that. The clarity tool is fairly simple. I, the best way I can describe it is that it increases the sharpness in the midtones, which basically just makes your image crisper. So a lot of these, a lot of the effects and you know, adding grain sharpness or whatever, that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna make your, make the image a little tighter, you know what I mean? So if you're going for a dreamy, you know, very soft, flat look, this is not the way you wanna go. Vignette is a personal choice. Uh, I like to use it a lot. I'm gonna lower the vignette. This creates the dark edges around it a little bit. We don't want it to be too like spotlighty, but we'll reduce it just enough to kind of create that focus in the center of the image. Um, if you do it the other way, you'll see it does white instead of black, um, which can help if you're trying to create some kind of heavenly feel. Um, but for this, I'm gonna go back to the darker edges. Now we're gonna go to grain. Grain is exactly what it sounds like. You're gonna add grain to the image. This will give you that filmic look if you're not shooting on film, which I highly doubt most of you are, but grain does kind of give it that timeless feel. So we're gonna add just a little bit of grain just for just to show you. Well, that's what it looks like if you had a lot of grain and I know you don't want that in your shot. So we'll add just a little bit of grain like that. Let's talk about presets. Do you like presets? Comment below if you like, if you like or if you use Lightroom presets. Um, I don't have a problem with them. Basically all it is is people uh, creating their own customizations for pictures that you can apply to your own. So you can you usually can buy a pack or download a free pack, uh, but it's just a quick way to quickly add detail and edit the photos 
very quickly, but it's also a good way to establish the same look. So if you're building up your Instagram profile, this is a great way to have like a consistent face for your image. But for this picture, we're not gonna throw in any presets. I really like the way it looks. The colors are popping on the background. Uh, his shirt, I like the detail in his shirt. His skin looks good, his hair looks good. I really like it. And guys, this is just very simple editing in Lightroom that anybody can do. And uh, actually, if you go down here, you can see the before, what it looked like, and the after. So, big difference, I'd say. Anyway, that's it, guys. So this has been a very basic overview of Lightroom. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know if you want to see us make more Lightroom tutorials or if you want us to dive into Photoshop or After Effects or whatever it is you want. Comment below. Let's have a conversation. That's it. I'll see you in the next one.